Hey folks, this is Dr. W. Today we will be introducing chemical equations. Chemical equations are the shorthand written language that chemists use to communicate ideas with each other. They are a series of chemical symbols put together in the chemical formulas that, des that describe how molecules rearrange in chemical reaction. Chemical equations are in essence a simple and concise way to describe different reactions in written form. Every type of chemical reaction where matter changes composition can be de described by these types of equations. From burning natural gas in the stove, to the rusting of metal, to the decomposition of liquids to form gas, there is a simple way to describe these reactions on the molecular level. This is what we will learn about today. The first step in the process of condensing descriptions of reactions into chemical equations is to recognize and name all of the reactants and products that are involved in the reaction. In this example, methane and O2 react to form carbon dioxide and water. The way we represent the reaction taking place is through the use of the arrow. The arrow really means yields or reacts to form and it signals the changing over from reaction from reactants to the products. To represent the rusting of metal, an arrow separates the product, iron three oxide, from the reactants, iron, metal, and oxygen. In this example, the arrow means decomposes to form. Hydrogen peroxide decomposes to form oxygen and water. Easy, right? Hold on a second. That is not the whole story. Writing the equation in this way isn't very helpful to a chemist who would want to see what is rearranging in the molecules themselves. To depict this, the equation must be condensed down even further to what is called a skeleton equation. In the skeleton equation, the chemical formulas are written in place of the names of the compounds. In the case shown here, methane would convert to CH4 oxygen to O2, carbon dioxide to CO2, and water to H2O. In the rust formation reaction, the iron would be shown as its symbol, or Fe. Oxygen again is O2, and iron 3 oxide as its ionic formula, Fe2O3. Ha! Just when you thought you had seen the last of those darn naming problems. In the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide, we show H2O2, arrow, O2, and H2O. Okay, now you're probably saying to yourself, okay, Dr. W, I got it. I think I'm ready to try some problems. Oh, we'll get to the problems. But first, I would like to throw one more curveball at you. As it turns out, the physical states of the substances are very important factors in how the reaction proceeds. So we need to show them as subscripts after each substance. In the case of hydrogen peroxide, we must show it as a liquid. One of the products, water, is also a liquid. The oxygen, on the other hand, is a gas. That is what makes the bubbles when you pour it on your cuts. Other symbols for physical states include S for solid and AQ for aqueous or dissolved in liquid. Sound familiar? Here are the full skeleton equations for the burning of natural gas and the rusting of iron. Oh, and one more thing. Sometimes reactions need a little help to get going. The substances that we use to give the reaction a little help are called catalysts. The picture shows a test tube with hydrogen peroxide as you can see, not much is happening. If we add a little manganese 4 oxide as a catalyst, we see that the reaction happens much more quickly. Catalysts are not products nor reactants, and they don't get used up in the reaction. They are usually shown over the arrow of the reaction. There is a full list of, these, of all these symbols shown in your book on page 323. Okay. So do you think you're ready for a problem? Here we go. Hydrochloric acid, 
and solid sodium hydrogen carbonate are placed in a beaker and reacted to make aqueous sodium chloride, water, and carbon dioxide. Let's try to make the skeleton equation. First, we have to find the formulas of each of the reactants. HCl is the first one. Don't forget the AQ for dissolved in water. Most acids are. Sodium hydrogen carbonate, NaHCO3, is the second reactant. And the problem tells us that it is a solid. The products are sodium chloride, which is dissolved in water, CO2, which is a gas, and water, which is a liquid at room temperature. Now, all we have to do is put the reactants on the left side of the arrow and the products on the right side. And voila, we're done. Simple, right? Try a few on your own to make sure you get it. In the next lesson, we will learn how to balance the equations so we have the correct number of atoms on each side. Until then, see you.